In this problem, um, once again, Smith sets you up really good with a well-written uh, question. Um, you first have to determine the mechanism, then you draw the products, okay? A lot of people look at this and they just start drawing products without thinking about the mechanism. Now, the reason why we need to think about the mechanism is because SN1 produces carbocations and you lose stereochemistry and that gives you um, inversion and retention. which means you form two products. If you have a uh, chiral molecule, you know, we're a stereogenic center at the alpha carbon. Now, if you have SN2, you have inversion only. So uh, that means you draw only one product. Okay. So you have to watch out for stereochemistry as well, because if your molecule is achiral, don't worry about it. If your molecule does have a stereogenic center, then you have to be really careful and apply these two concepts. Okay, so let's jump into this. In part A, we identify the alpha carbon, and we see that there's only one carbon attached to our alpha carbon. So we have a primary alkyl halide. Primary alkyl halides proceed by SN2, and we don't really need to worry about inversion here because the alpha carbon is not a stereogenic center. I can say that because there's two hydrogens here, okay? We need four different groups on a carbon atom to make a stereogenic center. So the molecule is going to react by substituting that bromine for the oxygen and the ethyl, okay? So we make that ether. In part B, we have a secondary, well, let's slow down here. Here's the alpha carbon, right? And it's connected to one, two carbons. So that's a secondary alkyl halide. And that could be SN1 or SN2. So what you next need to do is look at the nucleophile. Do you have a negative nucleophile? Yes. So if you have a negative nucleophile, that's strong. And we say that that's going to favor SN2. So we can rule out SN1 as a possibility. Now that we know what the mechanism is, we can apply this concept up here that SN2 is going to invert only. Okay, we have inversion. But keep in mind that this stereogenic center, I'm gonna highlight this molecule on the left, is so far away from the reaction center, it does not invert, okay? So this is the stereogenic center I want to invert. Okay, the one the arrow is pointing to, okay? So you invert here. That's where bond breaking and bond formation occurs. So you know the mechanism, SN2, we have the negative nucleophile come in from the back side, attack the alpha carbon, and kick off the leaving group, okay? And the nitri, the azide, I'm sorry, would attack from the back side of the molecule, and that's going to give us this product uh, right here. Okay, so nothing happens to this methyl group that's way over here. Okay, we're not kicking off a methyl group. And what we have is the azide is going to smack into this molecule from the reverse side. And you can just write N3. You don't need to draw out the Lewis structure unless you're gung-ho on that. Okay, so that's tricky. Um, but we do invert that stereogenic center. If you analyze it here, it's going to be opposite than up here. For part C, we look at this molecule. Here's the alpha carbon. It's connected to... Let's switch a different color here. Switch to, it's connected to three carbons, so we say that it's a tertiary alkyl halide. Okay, and we know from that it's going to be SN1. Now, we don't need to worry about this uh, because it's not a stereogenic center. We just take the uh, halogen and replace it for our uh, nucleophile. Now, remember, for alcohols, you need to remove the 
hydrogen. Uh, it gets deprotonated during the third step of the curved arrow reaction mechanism, and that's because oxygen likes to have two bonds in the neutral state. Okay, so that's the product there. Okay, don't worry about stereochemistry. For molecule D, there is definitely stereochemistry. That molecule is chiral. And let's go ahead and analyze uh, what's going on here. So here's the alpha carbon. That's where the chlorine is attached. And we have one, two, three carbons. So we can say that this is a tertiary alkyl halide, and that favors SN1. Now, what we've said in the summary in the beginning is that SN1 is going to give you both inversion and retention. So when we replace this chlorine, we can do so exactly the same way. Now, remember, when water reacts with alkyl halides, you form an alcohol, okay? Because once again, oxygen likes to have two bonds in the neutral form. And so uh, it gets deprotonated during the mechanism. The other product that you're going to get, so you get two things, is inverted. Okay, so we're going to put the methyl group. I'll write CH3. It's a little bit confusing here. I'll write a dash to the CH3. And here I'll write a wedge to the OH or the hydroxyl group. Okay. And so you form a product mixture. You're going to get 50% of the uh, product with the retention and 50% with the product with inversion. And since these two are enantiomers, we call the product mixture racemic. Okay? So remember what the problem says. Uh, read it carefully. Uh, determine the mechanism first because the mechanism will teach you about what the stereochemistry happens, okay? When you determine what mechanism is occurring, first look at the structure of the alkyl halide. Make your call. If it's a tire you can't decide, then look at the nucleophile to see if it's strong or weak, okay? Thanks for watching.